physical signs of mental health. Over to all of you to take this presentation ahead. Mental pain is less dramatic than physical pain, but it is more common and harder to feel. It is easier to say my tooth is aching than to say my heart is broken. This quote by C.S. Lewis is quite relevant speaking of today's world, isn't it? Warm greetings to everyone present here. Today, we, the students of Mount St. Mary School, India, are going to talk about the physical signs of mental health. Without further ado, let's begin. My name is Parky God, and I will be talking about the four stages of mental illness. Stage one. At stage one, a person begins to show symptoms of a mental health condition, but is still able to maintain the ability to function at home, work, or school, although perhaps not as easily as before they started to show symptoms. Often, there is a sense that something is not right. Some of the symptoms include a sudden desire to connect with loved ones, emotional anxiety, constant hesitance to do something, low energy, or the reduced ability to concentrate. Stage two. At stage two, it usually becomes obvious that something is wrong. A person's symptoms may become stronger and last longer, or new symptoms may start appearing on top of existing ones, like headaches, decreasing vision, gastrointestinal problems, etc. This creates somewhat of a snowball effect. The symptoms keep on layering on top of each other. Performance at work or school might become more difficult, and a person may have trouble keeping up with their family duties, social obligations, or even personal responsibilities. Stage three. At stage three, the symptoms continue to increase in severity with relapsing and recurring episodes. Many symptoms are often taking place at the same time. A person may feel as though they're losing control of their life and the ability to fill their functions at home, work, or school. Stage four. By stage four, the combination of extreme, prolonged, and persistent symptoms, and even the impairment, often results in a development of health conditions and has the potential to turn into a crisis event, like hospitalization and even incarceration. In the worst cases, untreated mental illnesses can lead to a loss of life, an average of 25 years old. Thank you. I would now like to pass on to Ayushi. Thank you so much, Paki. Now I, Ayushi Gupta, will be taking the presentation forward. So let's talk about our first symptom, which is fatigue or constant tiredness. Fatigue is a common symptom of depression. Occasionally, we all experience lower energy levels and can feel a little sluggish in the morning, hoping to stay in bed and watch TV instead of going to work or going to school. While we often believe that exhaustion stems from stress, depression can also cause fatigue. However, unlike everyday fatigue, depression-related fatigue can also cause concentration problems, feelings of irritability, or apathy. However, because of many physical illnesses like infections and viruses also causing fatigue, it can be challenging to discern whether or not exhaustion is related to depression. But one way to tell is that while everyday fatigue is a sign of this mental illness, other symptoms like sadness, feeling hopeless, or lack of pleasure in day-to-day -day activities may also be present when you are de depressed. Let's move on to our next symptom, which is decreasing vision or eyesight problems. A 2010 research in Germany actually suggests that mental health may actually affect one's eyesight. According to some doctors, people who are dealing with any type of mental illness, the world may appear to be gray or bleak to them. In such cases, people may also lose the ability to differentiate between black and white color, a condition which is known by the researchers as contrast perception. Thank you. Now I would like to pass on the presentation to Janvi. Thank you, Ayushi. I am Janvi, and now we'll be talking about decreased pain tolerance. So does it ever feel like your nerves are on fire and yet you can't find any physical reason for your pain? As it turns out, depression and pain often coexist. A 2015 study showed a correlation between people who are depressed and decreased pain tolerance, while another study in 2010 showed that pain has a greater impact on people who are depressed. So these two symptoms don't have a clear cause and effect relationship, but it's important to evaluate them together, especially if your doc doctor recommends medication. 
Next slide, please. Let's talk about headaches. Almost everyone experiences occasional headaches. They are so common that we often write them off as nothing serious. Stressful work situations like conflict occur can even trigger these headaches. However, your headache might not always be induced by stress, especially if you have tolerated your coworker in the past. So if you notice a switch to your daily headaches, it could be a sign of depression. Described by the National Headache Foundation as head tension headaches, this type of uh, head pain may feel like a mild throbbing sensation, especially around the eyebrows. While these headaches are helped by over-the-counter over pain medication, they typically reoccur regularly. Sometimes chronic tension headaches can be a symptom of major depressive disorder. However, headaches aren't the only indication that your pain may be psychological. People with depression often experience additional symptoms like sadness, feeling of irritability, and decreased energy. Thank you. Greetings to all. I, Yuvraj Kashyap, will be taking the presentation forward from here. Digestive problems or irregular bowel schedules. Digestive problems like constipation and diarrhea can be embarrassing and uncomfortable. Often caused by food poisoning or gastrointestinal viruses, it's easy to assume that gut discomfort stems from a physical illness. The brain-belly connection. You might not realize just how sensitive your GI tract is to your emotions. Think about it. When you're upset, one of your first reactions might be to feel physically nauseated, lose your appetite, or run for a comfort food. The brain and the gastrointestinal system are so closely linked that tummy troubles can be the cause I of... Am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Um, I'm just requesting somebody to mute themselves because, yeah, go ahead. The brain and the gastrointestinal system are so closely linked that tummy troubles can be the cause of or the result of anxiety, stress, or depression, according to Harvard Medical School experts. When you're going through depression, you may have digestive symptoms such as, number one, gastric distress, number two, no appetite or cramping. Given how closely the gut and brain interact, it becomes easier to understand why you might feel nauseated before giving a presentation or feel intestinal pain during times of stress. That doesn't mean, however, that functional gastrointestinal conditions are imagined or all in your head. Psychology combines with physical factors to cause pain and other bowel symptoms. Psychosocial factors influence the actual physiology of the gut as well as symptoms. In other words, stress, depression, or other psychological factors can affect movement and contractions of the GI tract. Suicidal thoughts. Suicide, taking your own life, is a tragic reaction to stressful life situations, and all the more tragic because suicide can be prevented. Whether you're considering suicide or know someone who feels suicidal, Learn suicide warning signs and how to reach out for immediate help and professional treatment. You may save a life, your own or someone else's. Symptoms, suicide warning signs or suicidal thoughts include, number one, talking about suicide. For example, making statements such as, I'm going to kill myself, I wish I were dead, or I wish I hadn't been born. Number two, getting the means to take your own life, such as buying a gun or stockpiling pills. Number three, being preoccupied with death, dying, or violence. Warning signs aren't always obvious, and they may vary from person to person. Some people make their intentions clear, while others keep suicidal thoughts and feelings secret. A very important question to answer is when to see a doctor. If you're feeling suicidal, but you aren't immediately thinking of hurting yourself, number one, reach out to a close friend or a loved one even though it may be hard to talk about your feelings. Number two, contact a minister, spiritual leader, or someone in your faith community. Number three, call a suicide hotline. Number four, make an appointment with your doctor, other healthcare provider, or mental health professionals. Suicidal thinking doesn't get better on its own, so please get help. 
I would now now like to pass on the presentation to Purvi Lohia. Hello, everybody. Today, I, Purvi Lohia, will be talking about medical problems linked with mental illness. First of all, heart disease. People experiencing depression, anxiety, stress over a long period of time may experience certain psychological effects on the body, such as increased cardiac reactivity, for example, increased heart rate and blood pressure, reduced blood flow to the heart and heightened levels of cortisol. Over the time, these psychological effects can lead to calcium buildup in the arteries, metabolic disease and heart diseases. Evidence also shows that mental health disorders such as depression, anxiety can develop after cardiac events such as heart failure, stroke, and heart attack. Diabetes. A 2011 study found that people who have type 2 diabetes and experience symptoms of depression often have higher blood sugar levels. It's thought that alternations in the brain chemistry and unhealthy lifestyle tied to diabetes may be related to the development of depression. Thyroid. Researchers have known for a long time that people who have thyroid conditions are more likely to experience depression and vice versa. Hyperthyroidism is a condition characterized by an overactive thyroid. Overactive thyroid. Up to 60% of people who have hyperthyroidism also have clinical anxiety. Depression occurs in up to 69% of people diagnosed with hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is connected to mood disorders and bipolar depression. Last but not the least, IBS and chronic pain. People with IBS frequently suffer from anxiety and, dep and depression, which can worsen the symptoms. That's because the colon is the part controlled by the nervous system, which responds to the stress. Evidence also suggests that immune system also responding to stress plays a role. IBS can also make you feel more anxious and depressed. Pain and depression are closely related. Pain can cause depression and depression can cause pain. Sometimes pain and depression create a vicious circle in which pain worsens symptoms of depression and then resulting depression worsens feelings of pain. In many people, depression causes unexplained physical symptoms such as back pain or headache. This kind of pain may be the first and the only sign of depression. Pain and the problem it causes can wear you down over the time and affect your mood. Chronic pain causes a number of problems that can lead to depression, such as trouble sleeping and stress. Thank you. Now I request my friend Mahika to take over. Greetings. I'm Mahika and I will be talking about how exactly to deal with these physical signs. Working out. Practicing regular physical activity reduces stress hormones like cortisol, increases the feel-good chemicals or endorphins in our body. It also boosts confidence and improves social interaction skills. Exercising can enhance the overall life of a person as it betters mood, improves metabolism, and promotes quality sleep. Consume a balanced diet. We need a required amount of nutrients each day from food. Key nutrients obtained from certain foods influence the level of the feel-good hormones like serotonin. These keep our, keep our bodies healthy, disease-free, and promote a good mood. Be optimistic. Being positive and having an out optimistic outlook towards life majorly promotes a healthy lifestyle and can help us accomplish wonders. It significantly helps us in the betterment of mental as well as physical well-being. This helps in the production of dopamine, one of the hormones that make us feel good. Self-love. You, yourself, as much as anybody in this entire universe deserve your love and affection. This quote is beyond true. It is highly important for each individual to love themselves and maintain a good mental health. It increases the overall happiness quotient, greater satisfaction with life, helps us manage stress, increases enthusiasm, and lowers the risk of physical or mental illness. Open up. Opening up to a close relative or a friend 
a therapist, or simply someone you trust can make us feel light, as if a weight has been lifted off our chest. This helps us understand the problem further, offers a different ideology, and hence may be more useful solutions to our problem. It makes us feel like we matter, we are important, and are being listened to. Now, I would like to pass on the presentation to Poori. Thank you. Yeah, now let's talk about self-care tips. First of all, value yourself and take care of your body. Emotional self-care, such as self-talk, weekly bubble baths, saying no to things that cause unnecessary stress, giving yourself permission to take a pause or setting up a weekly coffee date with a friend. Spiritual self-care, such as attending a religious service, spending time in nature, meditating, incorporating regular acts of kindness into your day, or keeping a gratitude journal. Second, exercise. Exercise daily. Exercise can take many forms, such as taking stairs whenever possible, and running and biking rather than driving. Joining a class may help you commit to a schedule if that works best for you. Daily exercise naturally produces self-relieving hormones in your body and, and improves your overall health. Meditate. Practice relaxation exercises. Deep breathing, meditation, and progressive muscle relaxation are easy, quick ways to reduce stress. For example, when conflict come up between you and your family members, these tools can help you feel less controlled by turbulent feelings and give you the space you need to think clearly about what do you, what do you want to do next. Learn how to deal with stress. Identify the things that put you under stress or identify your triggers. Make sure you understand why you become stressed so that you can try to avoid these circumstances. Knowledge is powerful, but self-knowledge is even more powerful. Avoid drugs and alcohol. Eat well. Eating mainly unprocessed food like whole grains, vegetables, fresh food is the key to a healthy body. Eating this way can help you lower the risk for chronic diseases and help stabilize your energy levels and mood. Avoid alcohol and drugs. They don't actually reduce stress. Often, they just worsen it. Quiet your mind. Get enough sleep. Adults generally need between seven and nine hours of sleep. A brief nap up to 30 minutes can help you feel alert again during the day. Even 15 minutes of daytime sleep is helpful. To make your nighttime sleep count more, practice good sleep hygiene, like avoiding using computers, TV, smartphones before going to bed. Get help when you need. Treatment. For stress relief usually involves a, com a combination of methods that include lifestyle changes, counseling, and relaxation, or stress management techniques. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.